Black spending matters. Black spending matters. Black spending matters. You know, we can, if we can uh, be able to facilitate the black dollar and put it put it all together, maybe we can we can start building empires that way. How do you feel about how black people spend money today? Too many of us are consumers. Oh, we're horrible. At And then the next thing that I do is I really tie this to, way, to the way in which our system works, right? This is another slide from uh, Misrepresentation. 37 women have ever served as governor. How many men have served as governor? Just throw out a number. 1,300. What did I hear? Somebody said something else? 3,000. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> this screen, because you're right It's okay. All right, so 37 women have served as governor. Mind you, this is from 2010, so we can add a few people, right? Like, we've had some elections. So let's just bump this up to 40. <laughs> and right in the last six years, maybe three more women have become governor, right? 2,319 men. Damn. And again, you want to add some numbers because we've had some elections, so you can add 40. <laughs> we just added three, right? And now I want to go back. What's this number if we say people with disabilities? What's this number if we say people of color? What's this number if we say trans people? Okay. What's this number if we say openly LGB? One. Who's five? Governors? And don't we wish? <laughs> the whole point is that as you begin to look at the more marginalized the body, you begin to look at the further distance between those bodies and political power structure, and political power in general, right? Certainly under the system in which we have. This is a quote that I love from Naomi Wolf. A culture fixated on female thinness is not an obsession about female beauty, but an obsession about female obedience. Dieting is the most potent political sedative in women's history. A quietly mad population is a tractable one. These issues are not issues of self-esteem. They're not issues of self-confidence, which is the way that we talk about them, right? Like you just have low self-esteem. We should just really help girls' self-confidence. These are political and economic issues. These are issues that are designed to keep certain people out of economic resource and certain people completely connected to economic and political power in the same ways that it has been throughout history. Right? And the current structure of capitalism ensures that that works that way. Now what has happened is that as people have begun to sort of you know, rise up and demand equity and power, right? The slice of the pie that is capitalism gets tighter and tighter and tighter. It's smaller and smaller. So you actually have to convince more people to hate themselves and opt out. So you start selling things like the slim and lift tank top girl that gives men six packs from Walgreens, right? Like, <laughs> you start selling ads that require black women to in media machines, level against bodies that are fat, disindifferently able, ending in bulimia, anorexia, binge eating, stigma, mass self-hatred, and senseless violence as a result of body hatred. It is clear to us that there is nothing rhetorical about being clear about the impacts of body hatred and calling the promotion of such hatred on any scale an act of terrorizing people based on their bodies. Yeah. Woo! 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 <laughs>
What would happen if we put that money towards social justice, toward organizations that actually dismantle inequity and injustice in our society, right? But we can't actually get there if we are not clear and coherent about what the current state of things is. And the reality is, the fact that my heart rate goes up and my palms sweat and beads of sweat fall down my face when a cop pulls me over is terrorism in my country. I'm gonna skip some things like money myths. I'd love to talk about all those things. Here's what I want oh, us to live man, in it with. It's the notion that what we call the way in which we think about money and how we spend it at the Body is Not Apology is what we call the difference between best interest buying and detriment buying. Best interest buying asks us to allow our economic investments, whether they be a latte or a stock portfolio, to be a reflection of our commitment to radical self-love in our own lives and in the lives of others. Right? We call detriment buying using our money to pay for things that further our feelings of deficiency, unworthiness, being numbed out and disconnected from our bodies and from our world. And the central question that we ask people to think about is what if every time we bought something, we asked ourselves, is this a purchase? Is this purchase a reflection of my radical self-love values? Does this purchase remind me that I'm a brilliant, powerful contributor to equity and justice and compassion for myself and for the world? And when we say yes to that question, we shift the very nature of our economic system from one of scarcity to one of abundance. Um, I've got an email list. I've got flyers about the body is not an apology. Thank you all for letting me share this information. is dedicated to helping black entrepreneurs advertise their products and services. We are striving to provide a platform that black consumers will utilize in efforts to support black owned businesses. As you all know, black businesses continue to struggle to maintain in today's economy where blacks spend over $1 trillion on purchasing products and services in the U.S. There is no reason we as a people should struggle to have our own businesses when we possess that much spending power.